having friends is pretty cool. So you get to pick up some random you like and make them part of your life. You can talk about your problems and they'll lend an ear. You can hang out with them doing nothing and be happy doing nothing with them. You could be saying some of the foulest, most deranged shit ever and they'll just stare at you. It's heartbreaking that there are people out there who don't get to experience this. If you're not academically enrolled, making friends in real life can be quite challenging. Propinquity is necessary for a friendship to form. That's why joining an activity or sport is a good way to meet people. Now this one you can dispute, but for me, whenever I go out, all I see is these great hair creatures called boomers. I had this realization Friday night, the 27th of October 2023 AD to be precise, when I went to see Five Nights at Freddy's, unironically pick cinema. Did you know they use an actual shrink ray on Mark Plyer so he could fit in the copy costume? Now that's genius casting, bro. While my friends and I were waiting in the cinema for the movie, something caught my eye. Everywhere I looked, there were Zoomers, people of my age. It made me realize how rare of an occurrence this was. And whenever I do see some Zoomers on the street, I'm not just gonna cold approach them randomly. That's kinda cringe. If only there was a convenient way where I could find young people like me, full of Filipino boy swag. Look at this, bro. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I got to see this thing, really cool, thanks to the internet. I quite like the internet, plain and simple. It has a lot of cool shit and brings a ton of convenience to daily life. Back in the mid to late 2000s, if I wanted to know tomorrow's weather, I'd have to go to my local Native American, Strong Eagle Jeff, go into his teepee, or in his native tongue, a duplex, ask him to perform the sacred ritual to talk to the great turtle of creation, and ask him if tomorrow it would rain as to not wear and ruin my lucky jorts. Great leader Jeff would then turn on his ancient Navajo technology called a Nintendo Wii and go to the weather channel. So whether you like it or not, the internet is here to stay. Now there is a small part of me that does believe that the internet is or did ruin my generation. And on some micro scale, perhaps, uh, I think we can all agree that it was shaped by it for sure, but to say it ruined it seems quite overdramatic. On the subject of loneliness, I feel like the internet isn't necessarily making people lonely, rather people use it to cope with loneliness. So demonizing the internet only stigmatizes it, which leads us nowhere. Now, I'm not trying to act high and mighty, right? Because I am guilty of this mindset. So instead of blaming our loneliness on the internet, let's use it to solve it. So how does one use the internet to make friends? Now, while the answer may be quite simple and kind of stupid to ask, bro, I'm sorry, bro, I'm just trying to help, there are abysses that one can fall into. You know, the whole wolves in sheep's clothing meme? Not all paths lead to Rome, and to one who's lost, any path will seem like the right way. So let's first speak about the hazards that the internet has lying around in plain sight. Since technology evolves at such radical speeds, our primitive monkey brains are unable to adapt or catch up to the quick changes they bring, right? So parasocial relationships have existed for a long time, but this is even more common now with the advent of online personalities. As opposed to traditional celebrities, many e-celebs share a ton of personal details about them so you feel this intimate connection with them. Not only that, but if they post regularly or stream long hours, you get to see them on a frequent basis, which I assume tricks your brain and scratches the same propiquity inches for when you're building actual links with people, right? You can interact with them beyond the inside jokes so you feel like you're part of the gang. Not to mention mentions and anyways. I'm willing to bet the Modelo infection aggravated this issue. It also wouldn't surprise me to know if it went both ways and some content creators believe themselves that their viewers are their friends. Whether naively or not, I believe most don't purposely farm or encourage parasocial relationships, but more on that later. So this all sounds super bad, right? But one thing that's really important to note is that parasocial relationships are not inherently harmful and they do have some benefits. You are bound to make a relationship with the content creator you watch, intentionally or not, because of all the reasons I listed, and that's okay, you're not weird for doing so.
Praying at the Altars of the Stars, a 2006 article classified parasocial relationships into three categories. Number one, entertainment social parasocial relationships. I like them. The majority of parasocial relationships. Number two, intense personal parasocial relationships. I love them. The second most common one. And finally, the third one, borderline pathological parasocial relationships. I would die for them. The least common one. So most of you fall into the first category, and there's nothing to worry about just as long as you don't let it mutate into one of the others two, right? Signs that you're part of the other two include your delusion about your relationship with them, you have intense feelings of connection and affection, and it begins to interfere with your day-to-day -day life. So this is very, very dangerous as you have lost touch with reality. Not only do you think that they know you, you also have a strong emotional attachment to them. This is very unhealthy as this is a one-way relationship. Remember that the person you admire doesn't actually know you. Some may remember some, for example, regular donors on streams, but that remembrance is superficial. It's normal to have some emotional attachment to celebrities or content creators you watch, but it shouldn't come to the point of simping or standing them on Twitter. They aren't part of your family. You're missing out on genuine connections you could be building with people who can actually care for you. And then there are those who actively cultivate this dynamic because building an intimate relationship with your fans makes a fan base more loyal and that can be converted into big, big money. This is another reason why you need to be self-aware so as to not end up being taken advantage of. If they tell you they love you, what they mean is, with a good faith interpretation, the sum of you, the collective, and not you as an individual. They are not your friend. What the fuck is this? So two of the big reasons why people build uh, unhealthy parasocial relationships are because the relationship provides something that's missing, so intimacy, friendship, understanding, you know, etc. And the other is all reliable depression. Ways to break out of it are take a break. Now, ideally, it's from social media in general. But if you cannot do that, at least take a break from the individual you're attached to. You could take up a new hobby or an old one you used to do. You could reconnect with past connections or neglected ones. A lot I talked about in chapter 3, the eternal sadness about introspection from the first Zoomer video can be helpful here too, so that's pretty neat. I recommend reading the article where I got a ton of the info for this chapter, links of all the sources in the description as always. If you feel like I describe your situation, you should find someone to talk about this. Reaching out is always the first step when needing help. Now, out of all the big social medias that I use, there's Instagram I use to send memes to the boys' group chat, and once I used it to uh, talk to a girl I wanted to be friends with, but she ended up ghosting me because she discovered my secret identity. The Poon Raccoon. In my early 20s, I would dive into dumpsters and go to town on industrial-sized, disease-filled STD angels. Over the years, I've built an immunity to radioactivity. I've trained very, very hard, so it brings me great joy to announce today I, Bobberino Jojo Smiles, will defeat the elephant foot of Chernobyl for UFC 56. Now, there's also this card I use to stay connected with all my friends, as we have our central hub, the Family Guy server. So this is my main use of these platforms, to maintain relationships. This is great for when we cannot hang out outside, because let's say it's winter, or for friends that live far away and have busy schedules. A downside of social media is that, while you can make connections, it feels harder to make meaningful ones. I think that's the catch for every social media, really. It seems too superficial. Granted, real life is also superficial, but I feel like there's more wiggle room. Also, the biggest downside of online, in my opinion, is that you never really know who you're talking to. It could be a creep, a weird freak, you know, one of those Minecraft nice guys that turn out to like earlier versions of Minecraft, if you catch my drift. And let's just say he really loves version 1.12. In real life, it's also like this, but to a lesser degree since I can look at them, and I can get a feel of them and their intentions. So please be careful, trust your gut and instincts. If you notice any red flags or if they're acting like they have no shame and straight up act up like Lovecraftian best, well, first of all, please take photos or video evidence of them acting like a degenerate and then report them. Be safe out there, especially you ladies and underage folks. 
Never give anyone your personal info like your phone name, address, phone number, or any other identifying feature. Never click a suspicious link they want you to click. Don't naively trust everyone as there are some real freaks. So I just want to fuck with Megatron fuck shit, bro. Just please be careful out there. And then there's those communities. The pills, incels, and R9K type beat. Very little good comes from them. You'll be brainwashed and you'll grow bitter, toxic, angrier, and you will be kept in this vicious cycle. Echo chambers that will rot your mind, your potential, and make you feel hopeless. Sometimes they do be spitting facts though. But there are better ways to be realistic and face the challenges of the world without gross radical views and doomer-like mentality. It's sad too, because they are slaves to their beliefs, and if free from their chains, they would just be some normal average Joes. I'm not trying to infantilize them. They are responsible for their actions, especially those who commit crimes. Fuck them. I understand that it's pretty hard to sympathize with them when they hold such quirky views, but I truly believe they can change as long as they're willing to take the first step. Most of them are not lost causes. They're lost individuals that can be helped, and by doing so, the cycle of hatred can be reduced. If you are in this situation, or if you're on the verge of slipping down this dark path, I would suggest watching this video from Dr. K. Now, I want to make a Zoomer video on this subject, but these two videos right here cover all the bases. Unless I can add something new to the conversation, this video will most likely never come out. I don't want to pollute the internet with redundancy, as there are already so many videos about the same topic, discussing the same talking points. Sometimes it feels like every day is the same. I'll keep this one simple and straight to the point. Greed. E-girls lusting over the shy gamer boys losers? You think they're real, bro? Use your brain, bro. You're not a fucking isekai, dude. Wake up. Devil's advocate, there's maybe like a couple of e-girls who actually do like the shy gamer boy loser. <laughs> and they will be mine, bro. Their intentions are blatantly obvious. They're pandering to the lonely and just want to take your money. Don't fall for it. Have some self-respect. Think with the head of your head and not with the head of your cock. Can't stress this enough, don't fall for it. Not only that, but with social media or OnlyFans, you can be in direct contact with these girls, which means you can build, can you guess what I'm about to say? An unhealthy parasocial relationship. Read my lips. You will never find solace in porn. She's not thinking about you, bro. She's not even real. You are not in love, you are just lonely. Then there are dating sites. I have two friends who had success in them. They both found and still are in relationships. I have friends who have not succeeded in them. No schlub on the knob. I, Barbarino Jojo Smiles, winner of the Femboy of the Year award two years non-consecutively, have not and most likely will never try them. You know, aside from the several federal restrictions that successfully keep me away from accessing dating sites as I am a registered SCP entity. Look, that's me. Those apps are kind of cringe the way they, you know... Gamify relationships anyway. The online dialogue regarding dating apps is mostly negative too. So honestly, I don't know what to think. What I do know is that you should be asking yourself why you want a girlfriend or boyfriend in the first place. Look, if it's simply to bone, you're an absolute dog. If you want a quick fix for your loneliness, putting that burning on someone else is unfair and wrong. You need to have some self-sufficiency in the first place. Now I get it, bro. It would be neat a burrito to have a six-foot Latina gothic girlfriend, bro. You can bully her, gaslight her, touch her eyebrows off. If you genuinely want to connect with someone on a deeper level, hey bro, give it a shot. Just be realistic. Inform yourself on how those dating sites work and if you're an overweight, no drip, smelly redditor, I mean, maybe you should work on that first. There will be people out there who will want to scam lonely people. Now, rule of thumb, okay, rule of the Joe Rogan. If it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true, bro. Smegma Mail selling you their online courses where you get the honor to pay $30 a month to receive nuggets of Merlin-like wisdom like, uh, uh, bro, take care of your appearance and make money because money good. Bro, they're bold. Never buy the premium plans on dating sites, by the way. They're preying on your downfall, desperation, and you're not going to get better results if you aren't getting any matches in the first place, right? I better not catch any of you paying for anyone's OnlyFans or be on some grimy campsite or I'm gonna fucking deck you, dude.
So let's start by defining a few words just so we're on the same page. An acquaintance is a person who one knows slightly, uh, but who's not a close friend. That's the definition on Google, but I would go a step further and say you don't necessarily have to be friends, just someone you know slightly. So like a co-worker, for example. A friend is a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, usually platonically. Making acquaintances is relatively easy, since you don't really have to engage or just put effort in it, really. So you want to make friends, but you don't know where to start. Well, I have the secret formula, bro. This pyramid right here, I did, okay? Bro, it's mine. It's a guide on how friendships are formed. It goes from the bottom to the top. Each tier will be named after one of the three walls from Attack on Titan, because I love that anime, but it's over now and I'm sad as fuck. So the first tier is Mario, and it has three steps. Number one, commonality. You need a reason to interact with people. A good start is your hobbies. Uh, things like football, airsoft, fighting games like Tekken or Melee, music, coding, literature, anime or manga. You get the deal. I recommend using Discord to find online communities, although other sites are fine too. Have some self-awareness. I doubt a political or a degenerate server are a good way to find reasonable sounding people you want to be mates with. Don't go into the Cooking Mama speedrun server trying to make friends when you don't give a shit about Cooking Mama speedrunning. Another thing to keep in mind is geography. I would recommend trying to find a community that's based in your city or at least in your country. This is so if you do manage to make friends, it can be translated into the real world. While you can be friends with someone who's from fucking Timbuktu, the chances to meet them are slimmer. If you're fine with that, you do you. The server I recommend anyone watching is the Healthy Gamer GG Discord server. It's pretty goaded. It's based around mental health and the betterment of oneself. It is not a replacement for mental health treatment, however. It's also LGBT friendly. I've been on the LGBT category. They have interesting discussions. I saw someone who listened to Bjork, and they even have a drip channel, so based. Disclaimer, I do get paid a case of Xanis by Dr. K every time I promote the server. Number two, propinquity. Propinquity means the state of being close to someone or something. So I know this guy, let's call him Zach. Well, back in high school, we fucking hated each other, bruh. But since we hung around similar circles and we were classmates, we interacted. A couple of years after high school ended, uh, he messaged me, wanting to patch things up. Now, I was down to be his biggest hater for life before that, right? But I'm glad he reached out, because today I consider him a good friend, and hopefully he does too. If not, fuck you, bro, I'm back on the hater trade. Now, the fact that we were forced to interact with each other sort of made us friends, and that's how a lot of friendship starts. After joining a server, you have to be active in it. Join in on the conversation and shit. Make yourself known. Try to start a fire. This is pretty straightforward. Like, if you're in a fighting game server, find people who want to play. If you're making any type of art, find collaborators. If you play Valorant, look for cool people you can play with and have fun with. You know, simple stuff. Gradually, you can build a rapport with those individuals. I'm about to sound like such a virgin. But if you play Persona... It's the same deal as the confidant system. The more you hang out, the stronger the bond you build. Number three, effort. Above all else, the thing that will give you the better results, and this goes for everything you will ever do in life, is boring, boring effort. You will need to put effort in. People take making friends for granted as if it's something that's just supposed to happen. But it's not. It's really not. In reality, making friends is hard. It takes effort and it takes time. When you were a kid, it was easier, but now it isn't. Just before COVID hit, for no reason, I was the throat goat in effort. I would go out and play music with people I met online. I saw a guy playing guitar on the street once, and I decided to go talk to him. It was nerve-wracking and totally out of my character, but I did it anyways. Later that week, we played some music together, and it was fun. But unfortunately, I never clicked with anyone. I met like 20-ish persons, so it was kind of sad that it didn't, didn't work out. I wanted to continue, and I think I would have made some acquaintance at the very least. But then the powers that be knew I was getting too powerful, too dripped up, so they triangulated my location and launched the Black Plague. For the past few years, I wanted to make new friends. I got nowhere with anyone, because I really never put the same effort as I did before. It can be awkward, it will be uncomfortable, but you need to try. Moria is by far the most challenging tier, because not everyone you will meet uh, will be someone you want to be friends with. 
It's also a relatively long process. Remember, your only objective is to make acquaintances. Even though the next two tiers are simpler, as they only have one step each, you still need to upkeep the steps from previous tiers. At this point, you have made an acquaintance, let's say, and you want to be friends with them, which takes you to the second wall, Rose. Rose is unique as it's the transitional point from the superficial to the meaningful. Rose's step is deepening. Now, this is a step where many get stumped as there needs to be a mutual agreement with both parties, as in the person you're trying to be friends with also wants to be your friends. To achieve this, you need to test the waters. Dex them randomly, asking them stuff about themselves. People tend to like that. The point that I'm getting at is that you need to have some regular interactions with them. Just be cute and show some interest in them. If they reciprocate, you manage to build a bond over time and you feel the time is right. You can say something like, hey, I really enjoy the time we spend together. I'd like to get to know you better and become friends. Is that something you'd be interested in? Now, even though it makes you sound like a politician declaring a trading partnership, I mean, you cannot be clearer than that. In real life, suggesting to do something outside of your place of commonality is the golden standard. So let's say you're both students, either at a school or a dojo. You can ask them to hang out. So basically asking them out of the date. Bear in mind, sometimes it doesn't work, okay? They might ignore you. They might not match your energy. Simply put, they don't want to be a friend. And that's fine. You can remain acquaintances. It will hurt, but you need to learn to deal with the rejection. Remember you're not entitled to their friendship. Heck, after hanging out and getting to know them a little bit better, you might not even want to be their friend after all. Maybe they're fucking annoying. Don't waste your time or theirs. Move on. Now, avoid being needy or obsessive when texting them, because these traits are kind of not cool. So now you made friends with them, which leads you to the final tier, Sina, which is by far the simplest, but if not followed, Friendships are prone to falling off. Your step for here is called kindling. So you manage to start your own fire. You even threw in some twigs or dry leaves to make it brighter. Now it's blooming and warm. If you hope your fire lasts a long time, you're gonna have to kindle it. I made three friends when I went to study accounting. I really like them. They're really, really cool. But after graduating for... I don't know why I didn't do this. But I didn't keep contact with any of them. Just this year, I tried to reconnect with one uh, with them, but uh, yeah, you could tell things were off and they wouldn't return to how they used to be. It sucks too, because maintaining a friendship or any kind of relationship is not that hard. You don't need to do an activity every week. Sometimes we don't have time or we, don't, we just don't feel like it. Just a quick message or a meme from time to time. If you were to get a message out of nowhere from your friend, I think you'd feel warm and fuzzy knowing that they were thinking about you. I know that's how I feel when my friend Faded sends me the cringiest, normiest shit ever, only to then send me some random gore like motorcycle crash videos. Don't actually do that. Hmm? So this is the same concept as maintaining a romantic relationship, says the guy who has never been in a relationship. Keep doing what you did before with the same effort and you'll keep the fire alive. So while I did put this in an online context, the cool thing about this guide is that it can be applied to real life as it is a simplistic guide on the foundation of relationships, platonic, and to some extent romantic too. Obviously, obviously, the guide isn't all-encompassing. I might have forgotten some things as a lot of the guide is based on basic observations, personal experience, and some research. Sometimes you meet that special someone and you instantly hit it off and you just get to speedrun the tears. Sometimes you meet those people that you will never like. Fuck them. <laughs> this guide is with the average interaction in mind. While I am a man, I doubt the building of female friendships, or any other gender for that matter, would deviate that enormously from the guide. We still all follow human nature. Remember, it will be long. It will be hard. You will fail, but you don't give up. You lose the first moment you stop fighting. So I'm not a snake oil salesman. I'm not claiming this video will magically make you a bunch of friends. Uh, treat this guide the same way you treat a guy for a video game. Just because you watch an Elder's Ring guide, that doesn't mean you will be the game. It could lead you to it, and that's what I'm hoping for. But you still have to put in the work and experiment as some things will work for some, but it won't for others. So you just wasted your time watching a 30 minute video. Ain't no way. So if you have tried making an actual effort at making friends, 
and you still haven't succeeded, okay, don't take this the wrong way, okay? Please. But you could be a factor in the equation. I'm not saying you're broken or you're, there's something wrong with you. But it would be very disingenuous to not consider that possibility. But just because you're the problem, it doesn't mean all hope is lost, okay? It's not over. It's, it's not over. Not over. So being shy, awkward around people, boring, and many other things will work against you. Now, let's be honest. Most people aren't boring. They're just not comfortable being themselves. So they put on this very vanilla appearance. I mean, I do that myself. Now, the good news is that you can always work on your problems. There is always a way. It could be an interesting topic of discussion for a future video. But for now, you know yourself and your struggles better than anyone. So be introspective, analyze and assess your hindrance and work on them. All in all, I wish you luck. You got this. Just remember, never give up. And the beast is out of its cage yet again. I am off my meds and I'm off the script. Bro, can we talk about those chapter names? Gold at the end of a teary-eyed rainbow? I'm an artiste, bro. With the super videos, by the way, uh, those came out of my head, bro. Pills and clovers? Sheesh. With the Zimmer videos, I want to talk about the issues my generation is facing and... But more importantly, solutions. Because I don't want to be that asshole that's like, Oh shit, there's shit on the floor. Who's gonna, cl who's gonna clean that, bro? I'm not doing that. I have a few ideas for the next Zimmer videos, but uh, I'm still unsure. I'm scratching my leg. I'm always looking for ideas since I am dumb. So if you do have some suggestions, sheesh, please leave them in there. Please, please, I'll give you credit, please. I added more humor to this video, by the way, because after rewatching the first Zoomer video, god damn, I was so depressed, I was so emo. So, uh, and I'm not like that in real life. I also want to, um, I want to start a new series where I can be more unhinged, like me right now. Hopefully they'll be quicker and easier to produce too, so I'll be able to upload more frequently because these videos take a while. It, they don't even take that much. I'll be honest with you, I was procrastinating again like a fucking idiot. I took, uh, this took like two, three, three weeks, but I took like, oh my god. So shout out to the Peruvian elves out there. I was the great Pundini for my final trick. I will make my hymen and my virginity disappear.